Hi everyone, I'm Gary Knoll. Diabetes is at an epidemic level and it's preventable in most cases. In this modern day and age, everyone is inundated with toxins, poisoned with heavy metals, herbicides, pesticides, fried foods, stress levels, lack of sleep. We've been conditioned to eat foods that are not good for us. We think that if everyone's drinking soda, it must be okay. If they're serving us pizza in public schools, it's okay. How is this generation so overweight. We are eating ourselves into the situations. Our sedentary lifestyles have led to this. We just want to eat so that we're not hungry anymore. I've had more than one person tell me that food is not only the comfort in their life, it's their best friend. For the first time in American history, we have a high percentage of children who have adult type 2 diabetes. Why is it that this is the first generation that might not outlive its parents? We used to have families that would bring their infants into our waiting room and they would be feeding them french fries as their meal. A woman came in with her daughter who was probably about 240 pounds and 5'4", already had developed diabetes at the age of 16. You lead a sedentary lifestyle, your brain shuts down, your body shuts down. The average child is watching more than 30 hours of television per week. And when we think about who's doing the advertising, the food is fast food. It's difficult to put together a meal that is well balanced for a lot of parents. Diabetes has a fasting blood sugar of 126 or more. And having a normal blood sugar would be having a blood sugar less than 100. We have now an epidemic of the use of insulin in type 2 diabetics. Insulin shots in a type 2 diabetic can often be a disaster. Insulin always causes weight gain. The body begins to store more fat around the midsection and fat makes them resistant to insulin and this becomes a vicious cycle. This is nationwide. Diabetologists and endocrinologists and internists will use insulin in a type 2 diabetic who's already heavy. By cutting the cycle, removing the offending agent, and reversing the underlying cause with natural therapies, we've been able to see tremendous results of getting people not only off of their medications, but in many cases actually reversing the disease process itself. Diabetes is a continuum. It's not one disease. This idea that in American medicine, the average physician should be looking at a single cause, a single type of treatment. That's archaic. Each one of you out there are at this point where you're thinking, I got to do something different. My loved one needs to do something different. And we have to take a proactive stance. The first years of my practice, I found myself feeling more like a fireman than a doctor, putting out fires all day long and, and throwing medications at people and trying to move people through the office as quickly as possible. And that's when I made the decision that I needed to look to a better way. Prevention is the key to everything. And I don't think we're doing such a fantastic job of it. We developed this model of what I call the puzzle theory. What we try to do is we try to break everybody apart and each individual area gets evaluated. The nutritionist looks at their diet, the exercise people look at their fitness, the physical medicine team looks at their injuries. We do a, an extensive blood testing. The most important blood test that I tell patients they need to do is a blood test for vitamins and minerals. Many, many people are walking around with vitamin and mineral deficiency and setting the stage for diabetes, heart disease, cancer, and virtually every horrible disease that we deal with. I talk about core vitamins, like all of the Bs, the vitamin C. Vitamin C is wonderful, and intravenous vitamin C can reverse the damage on the lining of the blood vessels, magnesium, potassium, all the minerals. These are things your body has absolute requirement for. Of course, chromium is ideal for diabetics, because chromium helps to stabilize blood sugar, may even make insulin do a better job at controlling the blood sugar. Vanadyl sulfate may have the same effect. Put them on exercise, put them on a high fiber diet, put them on uh, nutrients, do everything we can to get that weight off. Most people are very dehydrated. They're not getting enough fluids. We want them drinking healthy fluids, things like filtered water or green tea. I gotta know what I'm gonna eat for breakfast, what I'm gonna eat for lunch, and what I'm gonna eat for dinner. Are they moving their body? Most of us are sedentary. After my day of work today, I'm going to lift weights. It is not contingent upon how I feel. It does not matter what's going on in my life. I'm going to lift weights, and you know why? Because it's not an option. The way we process stress can affect 
cardiovascular risk factors, metabolic syndrome, obesity, and diabetes. We have individuals who have some type of perceived stress in their life, and that's what it is. It's a perception. So they have this emotional reaction. Stress is a factor in most illnesses. The sympathetic system is that part of our nervous system that responds to threat or danger. Our stress response system is turned on most of the time, even while we're asleep and dreaming. And we don't know how to turn it down and turn up the recharging system. Take quiet time every day for 30 minutes and listen to some beautiful music or to do some kind of meditation or relaxation. When the sympathetic system is overactivated, it inhibits insulin release and it affects glucose metabolism. We need breathing. The breathing rate and the depth you do it regulates the balance of your stress response system. Yoga practices, mind-body practices can significantly reduce the risk factors in people with metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, and type 2 diabetes. They can deal with stressful situations without having to run to the refrigerator. This is the, the wave of the future for medicine. Not sick care, but real health care. So as we put the vitamins and minerals in place, as we get the hormones in the right range, the results become much more dramatic. I need to have a sober perspective that says I gotta do this one day at a time. I did not gain 200 pounds overnight and I'm not going to lose them overnight. There's not an instant or quick fix. We can't passively wait for people to do things for us. You and your loved ones, by watching the show, clearly are taking that stance. The journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. I'm worth it. My life's worth it. My sense of well-being, my happiness is worth it. And when we just slow down and say, how would I ideally like to feel? And then that becomes a positive image that we put in our mind each day.